In this video, I'm very excited to be in Derbyshire and the Great British Journey Museum, uh, a motoring museum that promises to have a slightly different flavour to it. This is very early access. They are still working here, there are workmen everywhere, um, but uh, very exciting. Uh, they've been telling me their plans. I think it's going to be absolutely marvellous. Uh, but if we head indoors, because it is quite breezy out here, uh, it's not quite finished yet. This is such early access that they're still building, but this is going to be the main exhibition hall. And as you can see, it's enormous. Lots of lovely natural light in here. And they're going to fill this with over 100 classic cars, all that are part of the great British story, uh, the history of our manufacturing, um, going back to the Austin 7, which really motorized Britain, really. Uh, right through to the end of Longbridge in the early 2000s. So it's, it's going to be impressive, but where are the cars? Let's go and have a look at where they're currently being stored. So we couldn't be an awful lot closer to the River Derwent really, but this is where the fun currently is. Uh, this isn't the long-term solution. This isn't where the cars are always going to be, but uh, this is a bit like stepping into paradise. We uh, walk our way through and this is where the collection is currently resting. A gorgeous Bristol here, Vandenpla Princess. But yeah, what a space this is. So I think we should go and have a walk around and uh, look at some of my favorites in this collection. Well, we might as well start with the Bristol. This is a 1950 Very aeronautical because Bristol was used to making aeroplanes, but had to go off and make cars uh, once the Second World War was ended and how they did it. Remarkable engineering, wonderful craftsmanship. Look at the wood on the dashboard, the gorgeous Art Deco speedometer. Uh, it's just, the smell in here is amazing and they're wonderful cars to drive as well. And then next to it, the Vandenpla Princess based on the BMC 1100, 1300 on an M plate. This is fairly late just before they started switching over to the Allegro. But uh, the, the little 1100 based ones are better. They had a much more plush interior. Uh, look at this, lovely bit of wood. They had loads of soundproofing as well. I think they did cheapen the build somewhat towards the end, but uh, yeah, very, very 1970s. Look at the color contrast. Uh, it could only be from the 1970s. And next to the Bristol MGZR. Uh, this is what I like about this collection. It's not all about fancy uh, exotic machinery. It's kind of the everyday heroes of yesteryear, even if in this case, 2003, not actually all that long ago, but it does remind us that uh, this was very near the end for MG Rover, sadly. But this example, very, very factory fresh, very few miles on the clock. It smells absolutely brand new in here. That steering wheel barely worn. But these cars aren't just museum pieces to sit and um, not move. This is very, very dynamic. You can actually do an experience where you come and drive some of these cars. Uh, there's a, a good number they're going to have available for you to come and actually drive around right from um, Austin 7s up to something a bit more modern. And that's fascinating because that means people are going to get a real insight into what these cars are actually like to drive. Cars like this Sunbeam Rapier under here or the Reliance Scimitar. A uh, fun car to drive because every time you drive one, people will tell you that Princess Anne used to own one. If they do, just reply that she still has a Middlebridge Scimitar. Thank you very much. So this car is up and running because it's going to drive over now. This is one of the display cars. So you've got the plastic still covering the seats. Uh, the long throw gear lever sprouting out the floor, but not a really early Mini because the early Mini's had a straight stalk. But yeah, it's running ready to warm up. The Isagonis loved these deep door pockets. He didn't want winding windows because it would have taken up valuable space in the doors. These are marvellous little cars and we shall watch this one drive over here it goes it's last drive for a while 
it will be going on display in the main building. So here's a car you can drive, also powered by the A-Series engine, just like the Mini, uh, this Austin Maestro. Um, a very unassuming car, you might think, to look at it, but this is probably the most important car in the collection in some ways, because the owner of the museum, Richard Usher, began by buying this Maestro for reasons some people are still a little unsure of, but uh, I'm very glad he did. It was this car that sparked his need to um, preserve the cars of yesteryear. He realized that, you know, we needed to lock these cars away. And so this one is in lovely original condition. If we um, head aboard, uh, it's even got a Festival of the Unexceptional plaque. So it has been to the most marvelous of events celebrating the unexceptional cars. So that is the car that started all of this. And sat next to it is an old friend of mine. This uh, Vauxhall Chevette used to be part of Vauxhall's own heritage collection. I drove it a good few years ago now. Uh, I think it had about 6,000 miles on the clock at the time. We shall take in this marvellous red interior, or we would if it wasn't locked. Try the passenger door. <laughs> this isn't rehearsed, folks. This is live footage. There we go. Now we can take in this sea of red. Uh, and it's now up to 8,000 miles. So it's still a very low traveled car. And because of that, sadly, this one isn't available for the drivers either, but they do have other Chevettes in the collection. And in total, there will be around 32 cars that you can drive. Uh, they're busy MOTing them at the moment, even though you're not driving on the public roads, they want to make sure they're safe and legal. So uh, it will include cars like this Ford Cortina. It's a fairly late one, a Cortina 80 or Mark V unofficially fairly late one on a Y plate. That's probably a 1982, which is the year uh, the Sierra took over. So you will be able to come and drive this car. I'm sure it will be very popular. Lovely condition, but 58,000 miles on the clock. So a few more is not going to do any harm at all. It's in lovely original condition. You see a little bit of paint chafing and that's nice. That's actual use. So that's one of the stunning cars you can drive, but let's go and have a peek at a few more of my favorites and then we're going to go and drive the section you'll be able to yourself. Here are two more very different cars that you'll be able to drive here. This gorgeous little Hillman Imp in this fabulous turquoise color. That's uh, a lovely example. Uh, so if we head aboard, it's all very uh, tidy in here. It's not perfect. But that's kind of what you want if you're going to be driving the cars. Got a choke control down here, little snicky gear lever. I so need to do a video on a Hillman Imp. They are delightful cars. They've got this little hatch, so almost a hatchback. So you can put your shopping here. And then the 875cc engine under the engine cover at the back. Behind it, we have this stunning Jamaica yellow Mark I Astra, which dates from about 1982. By the look of it another car you can come and drive and experience the delights of manual steering only four gears and uh, this brown dashboard with this contrasting trim all color coordinated to the exterior of the car uh, it's just marvelous another lovely example the ha viva its predecessor hiding here behind but there are some older cars you can drive too some much older ones Another of the vehicles you can drive, and one of the oldest, is this 1937 Austin Ruby. The last of the Austin 7 line, really. Uh, delightful little cars, little 747cc side valve engine. And uh, if we look inside, the controls are fairly conventional. You've got three pedals, as you might expect, a long spindly gear lever. A gorgeous row of little dials and a sunshine roof. So you can really um, celebrate the great British weather. Uh, interesting link, that 747cc engine was used by a certain three-wheeled company called Reliance. Uh, they later developed their own engine. And this is another car you can drive. This um, slightly matte painted uh, Reliant Robin, a very late one uh, towards the end of production. So if you want some three-wheeled action, uh, that's definitely the car for you. It's great, you can come and play 
with these cars and take them on a drive. Yeah, there really is so much to see here. A Mark II Astra Celebrity. Uh, I think they were kind of dealer specials. I chuck a spoiler on, try and sell it as slightly more exotic. Frog Eye Sprite, uh, Victor FD. They've even got a City Rover here, which obviously pleases me mightily. Uh, nice Escorts. Uh, we've got uh, Austin 1300 Estate. Uh, that's quite rare. It's automatic as well. Gosh. Oh, and it's a Morris. I do apologise. It's the Morris version. Quite late on an H plate. So it really does represent so much of the British uh, motor industry. Uh, over here, they're just um, getting out the uh, Austin Swallow. So this is where Jaguar begins by building special bodies on Austin 7s. And... Uh, such a success, they moved from Blackpool down to Coventry and the rest is history. Decided to rename themselves, it was SS Cars for Swallow Sidecars initially and after the Second World War that name wasn't aging well shall we say. So they switched it to Jaguar and now look where Jaguar is. But uh, yeah, a quite astonishing collection. And here comes that gorgeous little Swallow Austin 7. Also lining up, ready to join its friends as they go on display. Not my Citroen, that's not going on display. Uh, this lovely Morris Minor Series 2 will be, and this delicious Mini Metro with um, just 9,700 miles on the clock and all the red vinyl you could possibly ever want. So what truly sets this museum apart is the fact you can drive them. This is one of the cars you can drive. It's gorgeous. Uh, 1972, I think it is, Austin GT, based on the BMC 1100, 1300. I've chosen this car, not because it's necessarily my favorite out of the collection. Frankly, I would spend weeks trying to decide which one's my favorite, but because this really was a great British success story. The 1100 sold exceedingly well. They sold millions of them. And uh, all the different versions, Riley, Walsley, Vanden Pla, uh, MG, Austin, Morris, uh, as well as far-flung weird creations like the Morris Nomad, the Austin Apache, all based on this um, simple format. This is an enlarged Mini, uh, designed by Sir Alec Izagonis. It's got the same in some gearbox, uh, hydroelastic suspension, which was fitted to some Minis for a, a short period. So it's interlinked front to rear. So it stops the car pitching. Uh, so it's the beginning of that. It's the beginning of transverse engines for everyday motoring. And despite a somewhat conservative tastes here in Britain, we took to this car in droves. And uh, I'm gonna show you why. We are gonna take it for a drive. Normally your drives would be accompanied, obviously. Uh, they, they're um, giving me some special dispensation today. There are three tiers, different levels of car you will be able to drive right up to Rolls-Royce, Bentley, Jaguar, that sort of thing. But uh, I'm going for this GT just because it is so representative and because I haven't driven one in ages and I think it'd be a lot of fun. Gorgeous styling, Pininfarina tweaked just to make it a little prettier. Being um, the later version, it's got slightly truncated uh, wings going on, the same real lights you'd find on most FX4 taxis. Uh, we've got the little boot is in here. Now you see there's a reasonable amount of storage in there, uh, spare wheel mounted underneath, but this car is in lovely condition. I'm going to assume restored, but uh, beautiful the GTs, I've always liked them. Got the British Leyland roundel proudly on display because this is from those BL days. Uh, but if we open the bonnet, there we go, we're in. Here is the A-series engine, I did a video fairly recently on A-series engines. Uh, we've got the radiator on the side here air ducted in through the wing there's the wiper motor twin carburettors on this gt and a slightly sporty exhaust the clutch on the end of the crankshaft taking drive through gears down into the sump uh, a remarkable packaging nightmare to be honest especially for the automatic gearbox designers but uh, it's what enabled these cars to handle so well uh, put it down by pushing this little clip here and we close the bonnet likes us. Yeah. Tinny days, tinny days for sure. 
But um, I'll get you in the mount and we'll hop aboard. Uh, we'll first take in all the vinyl, black sporty vinyl in this case. Uh, ergonomics, still a thing of the future. So we've only got one column stalk for the indicators. Lights over here. Wipers, very similar switches to my Invercar. Little four speed gearbox with reverse over here. Tiny pedals. But, you know, actually a really nice driving position, even with this slightly bus-like steering wheel. Very sporty there. And the horn's on yet. Yep, there's the horn. That's a good horn. So we'll get you attached and we'll go for a drive. Right, let's fire up that little 1275cc twin carburetor engine. Starts very nicely. Oil pressure's up. Temperature is up because we've already had a test drive round so I could learn the route. Uh, but I haven't actually driven this car yet. But... Um, I did notice that it sounds suitably sporty. Now, we're, we have to point out, uh, this is not a chance to drive cars and thrash the absolute pants off them. That's not what this is about. Yeah, testing the hydroelastic suspension over this um, uneven bit of car park. They're still doing work here, I haven't quite finished yet. But, um, ooh, this car makes some very nice noises. And we're taking in a route, we go around this really quite large site. He's let us go, that's very kind. So we go off down here. And as we come alongside this building, it's an idea time, ideal time to open her up a bit. <laughs> that sounds so meaty, that's such a good noise. Uh, so this is what you get. You do get to build up a little speed as you take the cars around and then there's a turn. That's going to scare the people driving the Reliant Robin. But don't worry, they're more stable than they appear. And I think people are going to absolutely love this because these are such nice cars to drive. I think there might be a lot of stalling as people get used to older clutches. No driver assists, of course, no power steering. I think I have got a brake servo, so let's just stop. Oh, yep, she stops well. Lovely gear wine. And that's, that's what I really want people to experience. It's the noises, the smells of these older cars. I can give her a quick burst down here. lovely car it drives really well that hydroelastic suspension means the suspension is um quite a bit more advanced oh, i've got a right way around the roundabout than um its competitors and there you go so you will get to get up as high as third gear um you can um yeah definitely get a feel for these old cars a big bump here so we'll slow down or the hydroelastic suspension's got it under control but that is the car I have picked out to drive today. And uh, you can do the same. You can book online at their website and you can choose which car you'd like to drive. And I think that's amazing. Uh, it's gonna make such a difference. So uh, good on them. Visitors will also be able to take a peek in the workshop to see what's going on. Got something rapier up on the ramp, but let, let's make the most of the situation. Look, the cars are queuing up. They're ready to come in, but look at this. Marina Free uh, Coupe 1300L. Look at the interior on this. I love these late examples. The Marina Free, the Allegro Free, the Maxi 2. There's a dinky little A-series engine. So this is where the cars will be getting serviced, but you will be able to drive. And you'll be able to watch what's going on through here. So there you go. We're going to finish on a historic moment. These are the first two cars to enter the fabled hall soon this will be full of cars full of posters information it's going to be fantastic there will be a, a sort of electronic guided tour where a tablet will narrate you through all the exhibits it sounds very promising indeed i cannot wait to come and see this when it's all finished uh, so check out the museum there'll be a link in the description below and uh, thank you very much for watching don't forget you can head to the hub nut store and buy lovely merchandise if you so wish but uh Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Farewell. Hmm. Will they be expecting people to do this?
That's the noisiest screen wash I've ever heard in my life. But good overlap, no triangular doom on one of these cars. Look at those wipers go. And parking in front of the driver.